This picture shows why Palantir will dominate the AI market. The, our strategy on, on AI is to just take the whole market. We have no pricing strategy. We're going to create a lot of value. We're going to get hundreds of customers and we will price it as we go. One, one of the things you, we've seen over and over again is when you're ahead of the market, you need to take territory. The AI market is a huge opportunity, $1 trillion by 2032, a compounded growth rate of 23%. That's massive. But how Palantir is actually going to capture this market? Take the whole market. Last year, ChatGPT took the world by storm. 100 million users in just two months. Everybody wanted uh, ChatGPT. Everybody wanted to start uh, a new AI model. So in just a pip, you had uh, Mistral AI, Artropic, uh, Perplexity AI. Everybody taking a lot of uh, users. Everybody taking uh, insane valuations. Cool, but Palantir doesn't have an AI model. So how it is supposed to capture the market? This is Rishi, the analyst from RBC, with uh, a target price of $5. Growing less than 20%, which is unheard of in software. Um, but look, I think what it takes is, is recognition that what Palantir claims to be and what they are are two different things. I, I'm not saying there's no value in this technology. There absolutely is. There absolutely is an AI play that they can help uh, enterprises get their data estate in order for generative AI. But what this is not, this is not a cutting edge generative AI company. This is not a company that is innovating when it comes to generative AI. And I think when that bridge of, of or gap of what is the message they're communicating to investors and particularly retail investors and what is reality when that starts to narrow i think we're going to see this stock come back more towards my price target which i think represents fair value for the company that's true palantir doesn't have an ai generative ai model but what rishi fails to grasp is that uh, the model is not where you actually want to be in ai because palantir's positioning is actually way better. In March last year, I wrote this uh, article on uh, my newsletter, palantirbullets.com, which is for free. So I encourage you to subscribe. Please, we are almost at 5,000 subscribers. I wrote, forgot the gold, because Palantir will sell the shovel. And uh, this idea already encapsulates uh, what Palantir is trying to do. Rather than building AI models, Palantir wants something uh, better. They want to capitalize on others, building, investing a lot in these AI models. My thought today is that AI is more about proofs of concept and toy apps and nothing real. Yep. I don't think there's anything real that's inside of an enterprise that is so meaningfully disruptive that it's going to get broadly licensed to other enterprises. I'm not saying we won't get there, but I'm saying we haven't yet seen that Cambrian moment of monetization. We've seen the Cambrian moment of innovation. Yeah. And so that gap has still yet to be crossed. And I think the reason that you can't cross it is that today, these are in an unusable state. The results are not good enough. They are toy apps that are too slow, that require too much infrastructure and cost. So the potential is for us to enable that monetization leap forward. Yep. And so, yeah, there are going to be developers of all sizes, and the people that came are literally companies of all sizes. I saw some of the names of the big companies, and they are the who's who of the S&P 500. How do you so Chamath is skeptical, but Carp last year uh, already told us something very meaningful. We all talk about open AI, but obviously Google is trying to do this. Others are trying to do this. Are, is this kind of technology ultimately become a commodity, or is there something um, very specialized something about it? Uh, that, well, the large language model is, is it a lot comes down to powering the consumption. And like, so they're going to be very, very large language models. I think they are going to end up being somewhat specialized. But the real value, the part is going to be the intersection between your business logic, your business norms or your laws and ethics, and large language models. And the people who get all those three are going to make money. Money. So we will make money, as Carp said. Notice uh, Carp is talking about large language models as a piece of the puzzle, but uh, 
where the true value is expected to be generated, where the value is expected to accrue, is in the intersection between the models and two other components, the business uh, logics and the ethics. So essentially, you want the model to perform in line with uh, your business models and to deliver business output. The model per se is just an input. So what Palantir tries to do is being that underlining layer on top of which the models are run and act in line with the compliance of a business in order to deliver business value. What we can call AI infrastructure or AI grid. Actually, I confess I didn't come out with this name AI grid because in 2020, Akash Jain, one of the key people of the US government side, wrote this article. Forget the AI race. Let's invest in a data grid for AI. He mentioned something very meaningful about the past revolution. When introduced in the 19th century, incandescent bulbs were, revolu were revolutionary. At first, only those consumers who had their own electricity generator could make use of them, limiting their seemingly endless potential. However, there's a big but. Without the electrical grid, we would never have seen the widespread adoption of the incandescent bulb and the subsequent surge of innovation to create many other de electric devices. We have been caught up designing individual AI ML models light bulbs, but we don't have a unified infrastructure to serve as our modern day electrical grid equivalent. And this creates a big problem because uh, AI models aren't something that can be, can be sprinkled around to make any project better. So the model performance and quality may degradate quickly as the data environment evolves. Throwing a model at an adjacent model without retraining it actually doesn't work. For example, an AI model for identifying pathologies in X-ray films was unable to be repurposed at another hospital. We therefore must create an, a holistic AI and data environment, a grid that works around AI model brittleness by making it easy to retrain and evaluate models and share training data. And here is my favorite part. These AI models look like a solitary light bulb. They are illuminating, but a single room in a single house at the time. For the US to maintain man technological superiority, we must build the data infrastructure that will allow entire skyscrapers to be illuminated. We also must enable new innovations, not just light bulbs, but toasters, televisions, and beyond. Let's invest in a data grid for AI. Now, this article was from 2020, so four years ago, and tailored to the US government uh, market. But the principles remain the same. Palantir doesn't want to seek gold in AI by building models. They want to sell the shovel so that uh, companies can make the best use of AI. And here we go back to my picture. If uh, we assume AI models become just an input for uh, AAP, so the new product Palantir launched uh, last year to capture this uh, AI market, then AAP becomes the orchestration layer that helps make sense uh, and use uh, these models to deliver business output, uh, essentially solving what Chamath said. Okay, so you have all these models, but at the end of the day, you're not solving business value. That's exactly what Palantir is doing, taking models, to solve business value and not just by building one model, hoping it goes, but orchestrating them. Each model has a problem. It has a percentage of failure. They say it has hallucinations. And the way you ensure that you have a minimum level of uh, hallucinations, so a minimum level of errors, is by having multiple LLMs uh, interacting each other and having a grounded ontology on top of which uh, your models uh, can run. This is the idea that Sham shared last year at IPCon. You don't necessarily need uh, just one model, you can have multiple models interacting each other and then having a synthesis of the answers from these models to have a reached answer, our answer that is grounded to the reality of your business, the ontology. AIP, yeah. is it built on GPT-4 
we, or we a different are, foundational we, model? We, we what are, is the underlying tech? Uh, the underlying, we are completely agnostic to whatever large language model you want to use. Large language models have certain attributes, um, like they can give you reasoning, but you can't import that reasoning into your enterprise. What AIP does is allow you to take the benefits of the large language model, enhance them with Ill algorithms that we help you build, and roll it securely across your whole enterprise. And what does that mean? It means you get all the benefits of a large language model in your enterprise today. Not in five years, not something that writes poetry. We're not offering people poetry writing in their enterprise. We're offering things that are so powerful that in really, in reality, I'm not sure we should even sell this to some of our clients. So if the models become just an input, what is their moat? And here gravitates all the answer of why Palantir is expected is uh, should uh, dominate the entire market. Have uh, a look at uh, this uh, video over here that I discovered uh, the other day. Uh, mostly with uh, ChatGPT, but we can also use uh, self-hosted model uh, among like commercial, other commercial and other um, uh, open source ones. In your stack, you will define, you will have uh, automatically GPT uh, enabled. Uh, what is AIP? So have you seen? You just click, you have a list of the models, and uh, with one click, you can just say, I want to use a chat GPT, which by the way is the default. And here we make sense uh, of uh, why chat GPT OpenAI was disclosed as a partner at the latest uh, AIP con. But if you don't want to use a chat GPT, you want to use a cloud, okay, you just click cloud. But there's a big problem with this. But on their side. It means that these models can be easily replaced. Think of this way. If uh, with one click uh, you can uh, say I use this model or this other model, it means that uh, your products is already a commodity. It means that uh, there is no real differentiation. Can you actually do that with Palantir AP? Well, yes, you can remove it, but uh, the more you build on Palantir, the more you, the more you unlock use cases, the more agents, you have uh, operating uh, actively on your business, the more difficult it is for you to detach from using AAP. So do you see why CARP says the true value will accrue where there is this intersection? Because the models will, at the end of the day, will try to compete each other. And CARP says uh, there will be just one couple of very big large language models but uh, the big value will accrue on the infrastructure that capture and allows other companies to use uh, not one, not two, but K LLMs to deliver business value. So while these models will fight and compete each other's profit, Palantir is set to capture the entire market, the biggest chunk of the profits. So Palantir doesn't operate in the AI model market. It operates in the AI infrastructure software platform market, which, by the way, already stands at the first position, so ahead of Microsoft, IBM, AWS, Google. Notice, these are all billion, two billion companies, and then you have Palantir, little Palantir, which is only $50 billion so far. What Palantir seeks to achieve was shared last year at Palantir Epicon, again by Sham, who during the demo showed the new interface for how an LLM-driven software could be actually built, a software platform entirely built on managing AI agents. And Palantir seeks to do exactly that. Rather than just uh, throwing in a model, Palantir wants to help companies developing AI agents so that this agent can automate functions delivering business value. So will Palantir actually capture the entire market? To see how Palantir is speeding up the process to capture the entire market, have a look at the video appearing here, explaining the launch of a new product, the new critical product, and if you want to help me capture the entire market, please like the like button, subscribe, and see you in the next one. Ciao!